Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max, and in this episode, I want to go over five quick tips that you can use as both buying advice and also use advice with your electric car to maximize your range. And I also want to talk about one very common misconception that a lot of us have about what actually affects range in our electric cars. So watch this if you want to get the most range in your car, regardless of which model it is. First, I want to mention, by the way, if you're not subscribed to Out of Spec Guide, do subscribe. We're making videos and shorts all the time, so the channel is there on the screen. Uh, and yeah, let us know with comments, emails too in the description, um, write in to let us know ideas you want to see, questions you have about electric cars. But let's get into this. One thing I want to get off my chest is that um, a lot of people think charging smartphones, laptops from their car, whether it's your USB outlets or if you have a 12-volt adapter um, or if you're using um, the plug in a car, like some cars like the Hyundai Ioniq have a full 110-volt outlet inside of them. Uh, people think this drains their range. Of course, it does use energy. It has to come from somewhere. But I just want to say that most of these 12-volt accessories you'll be using, like a smartphone uh, or a tablet, really don't draw that much energy compared to, relatively to what the battery size of an electric car is. To give a better illustration of this, uh, a few months ago, Hyundai actually pulled a bit of a stunt marketing thing where they opened a hotel powered by their car because they offer not just 12-volt, but a actual 120 uh, volt um, output from the car using its inverter to give you charge out of the car so you can power higher demand accessories like air conditioning units, um, you know, or blenders or what have you. Uh, so what they demoed is powering a little tiny home or a hotel. Those are getting trendy with a Hyundai Ionic 5, one of their models. And they were able to do this because guess what? EV batteries are huge. So as much as this is kind of a marketing stunt and sustainability thing, uh, I just bring this up as an illustration to show you that you can power a lot of stuff from an electric car and I think this should kind of hopefully illustrate to you how much power just moving on the road uses because for context I think they gave an example powering a like 60 inch flat screen TV and an air conditioning unit for a small home like this uh, for uh, I believe, what was it, uh, for at least 24 hours was possible, you know, at full power. Uh, so at least a day. So if you're in this mindset still of like idling your gas car uses a lot of energy, that's because you have to run the motor. With an electric car, when it's only powering the accessories you plug into it, you'd be surprised at how much energy can get out of it. And so this tip I just bring up to basically say, don't worry about, oh, my phone's gonna vampire drain from my car. I mean, yes, it's gonna use some energy, but you'll be surprised at how little energy most electronic devices use um, relative to just the sheer amount of energy you need to actually drive your car and all of its thousands of pounds. So that brings me to my first tip that actually does affect range, which is wheel size in electric cars. And you might have seen in your car configurator that you can choose different specs of wheels. So uh, different sizes usually, right? Like a 19 inch rim versus a 20 inch rim for larger vehicles um, would be an example here. So there's some interesting articles on this on basically finding that wheel sizes as they get larger tend to impact range negatively on an electric car. They use more energy. Uh, and that's because they're just bigger, they weigh more, and the torque required to move those larger wheels for an electric motor is a lot more drain. So I'll give a very concrete example here. The Lucid Air, a luxury sedan known for having lots of range, actually gets its EPA figure, if you've ever heard, of 560 miles of range, right? Really impressive. You only get that when you get the 19-inch aero wheels. And Believe it or not, you know, 19 inches nowadays is small for car wheels. But anyhow, those are the small options. Now, if you want the higher performance wheels, the ones that are better at higher speed, that come with sportier tires, you get the nicer looking 21 inch wheels. And I do admit they look nicer on the car, uh, but they're going to come with a huge hit to range. I believe like somewhere in the neighborhood of 15% um, of the range of the car is lost just by having these larger wheels. So wheels make a huge deal. Also, some wheels have aero covering, so you might have seen that certain Teslas have an aero cover for their wheels, which helps with aerodynamic resistance. Some people don't like the look of it, so they remove it because it's just a plastic removable piece, and they let the just bare rim shine through. That's fine, but you take a range hit. So generally, I see this as a trade-off of looks versus practicality. If you need the most range, you might have to suck it up with the smaller wheels and maybe your dorky aero covers as well. Now, on the note of wheels, another thing that goes on those wheels are tires, and tires have a huge impact on electric car range. You'd be surprised how much. Your vehicle probably came with original equipment tires that might have even been electrical 
sorry, electric vehicle specific, uh, meaning that they are optimized to have what's called low rolling resistance. Rolling resistance is a force sort of like drag that basically acts against you. And the more rolling resistance you have, the higher that number is, the lower range you're going to have because basically the resistance that you tires have with the ground, is going to increase with speed. And depending on the tires you have, uh, well, you're going to lose more range. So a lot of nerdy graphs and information going on here, but let me explain what's going on. So in this graph, what we see is um, along here on the x-axis, car speed, right? So as car speed increases, we see the coefficient of rolling resistance, basically the amount of rolling resistance we have for any given set of wheels and tires go up. That's a normal relationship. The faster you go, the more resistance there just is. However, there is a way to get around this. By running higher tire pressures, as you can see here, where they have these label, labeled bars, um, the bars that represent higher tire pressures actually start off with less rolling resistance and gain less rolling with gain less rolling resistance at speed. So what that means is basically that if you have uh, tires at 40 PSI versus 35 PSI, you're actually going to probably get more range, especially at highway speed with your electric vehicle. This is applies to gas cars as well, but it's much more noticeable on electric vehicles where, of course, we're always worried about range and absolute energy because batteries are just less dense than gas tanks. So what is the long advice here? Long story short. Well, basically, just keep in mind your manufacturer recommendation tire pressure uh, and likely stick to that. So I'm not telling you overinflate your tires. Some tires are only re re uh, rated to a specific pressure. And if you're going to try to pump your tires up to 50 PSI to get the most efficiency, please don't do that. You might blow something up. Uh, just, I would say most manufacturers do recommend surprisingly high pressures. Go with the manufacturer spec. So if you're used to in your gas car doing 32, 34 PSI, your electric car probably needs somewhere more in the neighborhood of like 40 PSI, maybe even 42, 44. Um, increase your pressure to that. Now, this comes with a downside. Higher tire pressure is more efficient, but it does mean your ride is probably going to be less comfortable because your tires are less squishy. Um, so that's something to consider. It will lead to a little bit of a bumpier ride. And also, if you're a performance driver, you like going around a track, it's you know less soft tires. Uh, the harder they are, generally, they're going to be a little bit less nice for a performance setting. So if you have a spicy, kind of fast performance electric car, maybe you want to run lower tire pressures, but just be deliberate with that. That brings me to my next tip, and that is on the note of fuel economy in electric vehicles, or just basically economy overall. There's one big thing you can do every time you drive an electric car um, to consider to increase your range, and that's it sounds really simple, but just change your speed and maybe slow it down a bit. Now, you don't have to do this, but if you want to get the most range, this is what you do, and let me explain why. So here I have the EPA's website for fuel economy, and you can see sort of comparable vehicles here, right? The Tesla Model 3 Performance versus a BMW 330i sedan. That's a gas vehicle. So you can see that the automatic uh, BMW with its eight-speed transmission uh, gets actually higher MPG or miles per gallon on the highway than it does in the city. This is a normal relationship. If you're familiar with gas cars, it's pretty standard. However, the Model 3, the Tesla, gets much higher higher, well, not much higher, but marginally higher uh, range in the city or efficiency, sorry, uh, represented here as miles per gallon equivalent, uh, basically just an equivalent calculation EPA likes to use to sort of relate to what miles per gallon the gas car would be. But long story short, it's more efficient at lower speeds in the city than the highway. Now I could go into all sorts of nerdy details about this, but the long and short of it is that electric cars usually have one speed transmission, single speed, whereas gasoline vehicles have a many speed transmission. So they usually have an efficiency sweet spot somewhere in the zone of 30 to 50 miles an hour. Um, you might have noticed this yourself driving your gas car. An electric car has a very linear relationship to speed because of that single speed uh, motor. The motor will just use more RPMs to get to higher speeds. The higher speeds you go, and of course, because of aerodynamic drag, the more you're going to lose out on. So and basically every electric car, you're never going to find sweet spots of efficiency that are higher than lower, if that makes sense. So you're, you, let me illustrate this. While the BMW might be more efficient at 40 miles an hour than it would be at 30, that's not the case with the Tesla. It's much more simple with electric vehicles. The faster you go, the more you consume. So practical advice here is consider on the highway, if you can go 70 miles an hour instead of 75 or 80, it makes a huge difference. I'm actually going to shout out someone on Reddit who made a little graph uh, with their Tesla Model Y. Now keep in mind, 
this is we didn't observe this test. I can't speak to the verifiability of it, but it does line up with what I know. It shows that basically in their driving experience, the faster they went, uh, the more their consumption went up of watt hours a mile, the more energy they used, resulting in basically they would have had less range. So if they're going 75 to 80 miles an hour, they're consuming 342 watt hours a mile. But if they bump that down just by 10 miles an hour, uh, they would only be consuming 308 watt hours a mile. So that's a pretty big efficiency delta. That's almost 10%. So almost you could consider that 10% more range for going 10 miles an hour less. Um, could be worth it. So consider that, of course, go the speed that's safe. But just keep in mind, if you're in the right lane, going slower, um, you are doing yourself a favor in electric vehicles, just the slower they go, the more efficient they are. That brings me to my next tip, which is in electrical, sorry, why do I keep saying electrical vehicles, in electric cars with dual motors or all wheel drive systems where they have one motor on each axle to give them all wheel drive. Some of them have what's called a disconnect because certain I can get into all kinds of nerdy specs about this, but basically the way motors work in electric cars, certain t types of motors can't just be turned off. They have to actively be disconnected to not be rolling because if they're rolling, they're using energy. So for a lot of all wheel drive systems, the car is more efficient just using one motor, but to do that, it has to disconnect the front motor. So this is a relatively recent technology in newer electric vehicles, like the Hyundai products do this, as do the Kia ones, where they can use a clutch to basically disconnect that front motor. Uh, and some of them do this automatically. So channel sponsor about a spec Magna actually demonstrates here that they have a system to do this uh, basically predictively, where they can monitor uh, the road conditions and move their all wheel drive system to a just rear wheel drive system for efficiency, uh, but make it all wheel drive when it needs to be when there's snow, turn that off when the conditions clear up, uh, just using it's basically cameras and stuff. Now, some cars are smart enough to do this, but you can change this yourself also with drive mode settings. So if your car has an efficiency mode and is a dual motor all wheel drive car, this might be what it's doing. This would be the case with vehicles like the new Polestar 2 that just came out, uh, the Volkswagen um, uh, some of the Volkswagen products, I think, uh, but I know for sure the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6 do this. So this is becoming increasingly popular because, like I mentioned earlier, if you use a single motor instead of two motors, it does make it more efficient. So using the single motor when it needs to, only engaging dual motors when it needs the traction of all-wheel drive. So fewer motors is better, and if your car has an efficiency mode, consider that because that might be what it's doing depending on the model of your car. Uh, and yeah, there's uh, one more thing I want to bring up that doesn't have to do with driving so much, but does have to do with climate in your car, because you might have heard that electric cars lose a lot of range in the cold. Now, this is true. Batteries do perform worse in winter, but a big reason of this is just keeping that car warm. Now, there's two ways to keep an electric car warm. You can use what's called resistive heating, which is basically just running current through coils and creating heat that way, which is actually pretty inefficient. And then doing what a lot of electric cars are doing now is using a heat pump, which is more like an air conditioner in reverse that actually extracts hot air from the environment, brings it into the car and extracts cold air. So heat pumps are really cool. However, they are more expensive, so they're not found on every electric vehicle. Tesla has started implementing them in their cars since I believe like 2021, I think. Uh, and now a lot of car, uh, vehicles use it, like the Volkswagen ID4. Uh, and you can find on uh, this interesting graph that the Washington Post made doing some research that for certain cars, they lose a lot more range in winter than others. And the trend tends to be that cars with heat pumps lose a little bit less of their range because the heat pump is more efficient for getting that cabin hot. Now, my boss Kyle has found that once the cabin is hot, no matter whether it was through a resistive heater or a heat pump, um, it usually doesn't actually take that much energy to keep it hot, assuming your doors and windows are closed. So this is more of a marginal difference than some of the really big impactors we were talking about earlier, but it's something I thought would be worth mentioning. So that's yet another thing to consider for range in your uh, electric car. But I hope this video was helpful. Uh, please do comment if you have questions. Do send us emails as well. And let us know what other kind of topics you want to see. But yeah, I've been Max with Out of Spec Guide. I'll see you next time.